Sorry, did you finish the agenda? Yes. Okay, so could I comment on the agenda? Pardon me. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, okay. So it seems like um, when the public asks for things to be put on the agenda, it never happens. And, you know, we are part of democracy here, and we'd like you to pay attention to our needs. So um, it's not on here this time, but uh, please. When you receive requests, consider them and please try to address those concerns. Thanks. Thank you. Um, okay, really quickly, Chief Bray, now uh, our fire chief over here, and then also we have Tiffany, who is, what is the actual position? Administrative assistant. Administrative assistant, who will also be at our meetings taking notes. So, welcome, and it's always a pleasure to see new faces. Um, all right, well, jumping back in, item E, consent count. Do I have a motion? Um, I have two, three. Um, oh, wait, uh, do we have a second before we jump in? Um, second. Okay. Oh, <coughs> um, in the uh, item number five, um, page three, um, kind of middle um, of the paragraph, it um, says, Marin was getting host, the agreement with his control with no accountability. I think it should just say Marino is getting host, comma, this is control and accountability. I think that's just what what's the intention of the speaker. And then um, the last um, sorry, next to last sentence um, refers to pre position striking. Um, is that the correct expression? Or is it proposed? Uh, no, three position is actually correct. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Sorry. Anybody else? John. Uh, I, I'm sorry. No, it's not uh, half yet. Well, we're doing claims paid as well. Yes. Uh, okay. You're doing, you're, okay, but you're doing the draft minutes? Okay, we're on item E, we're at the board, and then I'll open it up to the public. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you, you, I just heard someone talk about draft minutes. Is that what you're talking about? Item E, A, right, the consent calendar. Item A is draft minutes, and item B is bills paid. So the total consent calendar. Oh, okay, so you are talking about the minutes. So uh, the so minutes. The minutes you're out of line right now. We're at the board. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, Jeff? Yeah, I was, um, I'm curious about the tree masters, 2849 tree masters for 11,000. What uh, says vegetation management? Could you provide any details on what that expenditure was for? What's the number? Uh, 2849. Oh, we're doing bills paid? And then we're going to be able to come back to minutes, right? And jump it back in board. Okay. Both topics are open. That's fine. They're just both. They're both together. They're both in the motion. Well, one is A, and one is B. Just asking. Same way we do it every month. Nothing's changed. Okay. Uh, I would have to look at the exact invoice, Jeff, to tell you what precisely it was for. Uh, given that it's under fire, I would assume that this is either uh, related to some of those chipper days, or it could be related to work that was done uh, along with Queen stuff. I don't have that pool in front of me, so I'd have to get back to you on it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could answer, I think, because I asked the question last month of the chief, and that was a bunch of 
vegetation cleanup and clearing uh, on that little fire road between the end of Idleberry and Bridgegate, and some work around the vicinity of uh, Bridgegate and Creekside. That's where the sheep had tree master worship. And that bill was for approximately $3,400. This one's for eleven one twenty. So it sounds like a lot more extensive work was done. I was just curious what. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else having their consent calendar? No. All right. Now open up to the public. Any comments on the consent calendar? Uh, yeah, my name is John Borrow. So I just wanted to comment on a uh, minutes item from last month. And it said uh, that I was concerned my voice wasn't being heard. And this is regard to, I guess we call it the building shed. But that's not accurate. Um, what I said last time was I was speaking for people who I got to sign the petition with me. So I would like it to be shown that I'm not speaking about me. I'm speaking for the community. And I'm concerned that not my voice isn't being heard. That's fine. I'm concerned that the community voice isn't being heard. Yes. And it would, I'd like the minutes to reflect that if possible. Thank you. Uh, are there comments uh, on the consent calendar? Stephen? Yeah, uh, as far as, uh, well, <coughs> yeah, there are items on the consent calendar, but I'm not going to uh, go into them. But um, I, I want to amplify the request that we have fidelity to uh, what is actually spoken at the meetings and um, and that when the public makes requests for changes uh, that they actually get changed. Um, you're not putting out accurate information if you approve uh, uh, minutes that actually didn't happen. We have a new opportunity for that. That's all. Anything else? I do. Okay. Um, in the, the draft minutes under Park and Recreation Matters, number one, it says Marnello stated she sent an email to Valentine about the possible ramp at the side entrance to the Park Panhandle path. I requested that the item be placed on a future agenda. It's very important to get access. Well, I actually said for four years now, I've been requesting a handrail be put there. And it's not, um, well, it's sort of as the entrance, but the, the handrail would be on the incline, and I've said this four years in a row, from the top of the entrance to the bottom of the panhandle. So it's just a little, you know, little glitch there. Um, it's a handrail. And the other thing uh, I wanted to ask about bill number 2842, the negative declaration filing fee of uh, $2,338. I just wondered how that was calculated. The and if we total know, of what the filing fee is? I'm sorry? The total of what the filing fee is? Number 2842. Uh, I, I know what you're looking at. How what is calculated specifically? How it was calculated. The the total of $2,338.25? Exactly. That's the fee the county charges for fire. Oh, for anybody? Correct. Oh, it's not a calculation based on the size of your project? No. To, it's just a flat fee? Correct. Great. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Call a question. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. Motion can't carry unanimously. Moving on to item F, public comment open time for items not on the agenda. So I'm just going to read our little standard blurb about this. Speakers are asked to limit comments to three minutes. Speakers may comment only on non-agenda items within the subject matter jurisdiction of the district. The board may not take action on, consider, or debate items not on the agenda except under narrow circumstances meeting statutory tests. Responses, a response to comments on non-agenda items will be limited to factual information or clarifying questions from staff or board. The president may refer the, 
the matter to staff or to a future meeting agenda. Open it. Uh, I, I was confused about the last vote. Um, there was requests for changes. Did you vote for the changes uh, that were recommended by the public when you said you approve? So, we have not in the past corrected and reissued, but I think that's what's been called for. So, um, should we um, ask Tiffany, uh, the administrative assistant, to make those changes and to reissue the minutes from last month's meeting as part of next month's meeting? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the um, <clears throat> district's finances. And I and please, nobody interrupt me, because I'm going to lose my train of thought, and I don't want anybody to try to do that to me. Thank you. So for almost six months now, we haven't had any disclosure from the architect Hansel about his costs for the last six months of work. The first two months that he did work for us cost $12,000. So I think we should just be keeping track of his costs just to be aware of the financial responsibilities that we have for his open-ended contract. And I certainly wonder why we don't have any bills and if something's being hidden. Yeah, I had a baby, and we have excuse a three-year-old Linda. Okay, no, but it, that's really excuse insulting. Excuse me, that's he's out of order. Insulting. He is out I'm of order. I'm just tired of, of that kind of garbage. He's out of order. Yeah, and I'm, I'm tired of just speaking, saying I'm tired of that garbage. To speak. It's just ridiculous. Let, let us speak. She has three minutes. No, I understand. Let us speak. I, I agree. <laughs> but, you know, Can it's I a little continue, bit personal. Can I continue, please? May I continue? Your turn. Okay. Thank you. Marinwood has been in poor financial straits for years. And the topic of bankruptcy keeps coming up a couple times a year. There have been lots of different studies, committees, that kind of thing, to save money. Those have been done. There are no reserves except for OPEB right now. Uh, we have to borrow from the county every single fall to pay our bills. And lots of things have been happening that throw off our budget. And I know we certainly we can't make 100% accurate budget. Nobody can. But one of the things that I keep going back to, and I know you're probably sick and tired of me talking about it once or twice a year, is wasting $102,000 in attorney's fees to fight the fire department for the very, very minuscule amount of corrections to their overtime calculations that have been wrong for years and have been wrong for all different fire departments. I'm only thinking that it's very prudent that we understand the cost of projects and that we follow the cost of projects so we know exactly how much money we're spending. And I would really like to know how much money we are spending for the architect for the park and rec storage garage shed building. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, public comments? No? Um. I want to take the uh, time to just address something that I've been wanting to address with you guys for a long time, and I, and I hope you appreciate the sentiment that this is, is given in, because it's really trying to, to do something for your own benefit and for the benefit of the staff. Um, over the years, the, the CSDs developed this terrible habit, sorry, fuck it, that's cheap. Uh, developed this terrible habit in the way it's run meetings. Um, I think it's a lack of understanding of what board meetings are and how they should be run. And I saw this degrade myself over the years that I was uh, a director. And just so you know, I mean, these meetings stand in stark contrast to other board meetings, the way that board meetings are run uh, in other agencies around. And I didn't realize the extent of that until I started spending part-time managing some districts myself and saw how efficient they were, how, uh, you know, basically, you know, what the spirit of the meeting and the, and the, and the, uh, the way that the meeting actually should, uh, should be run. So um, just important uh, points to understand. I'll try to go through this quickly, but I'll probably send it to you. Um, board meetings are meetings of the board. I mean, you literally could sit in a circle uh, and because you are meeting with each other and you are meeting with the staff, and the public is observing. There are specific points where they partake, but these are not meetings of the community in the sense that everybody is participating and everyone is, is sort of has an equal uh, say. 
you are elected officials and you speak with the voice of your uh, authority of your seat. That is different than a person making a comment who speaks for themselves and does not speak for the community because they were not elected. Um, and I think you know what happens is that this doesn't respect the democracy that, that we have. The observers are not the elected uh, you know, officials, officials that you are. Um, board meetings are also policy meetings. They're not operations meetings. Operations are done by staff. Uh, they should match the policy directions that you set in the meetings. Um, but let the staff do their jobs. And if they're not doing their jobs, the time to the appropriate form for that is an employee evaluation that you do uh, you know, once a year or occasionally, whatever you, whatever you set. But this is not the occasion to do operations. This is the occasion to talk about policy in front of, of, of the public. Um, and if you want details on the operations, don't do them here. Do them, uh, you are perfectly empowered uh, to be able to talk to the staff directly and ask uh, you know, questions directly on, on details. What it does is it unburdens these meetings from those particular uh, things and allows you to focus uh, on policy. Um, so basically, not following these premises means that the meetings are too long. Everybody gets, it's an unfair burden to all of you, the board and your volunteer positions. Uh, it's terrible for the staff. It's bad for morale and the long-term health of the CSD. Um, and it's just, it's not a way that uh, business gets done. It's not effective. And it's unfair to the public to have poorly run uh, board meetings. Um, I think the problem is, uh, at best, that the Brown Act is being misinterpreted. Uh, more typically here, it's being abused. Um, and I'll tell you right from the uh, guide um, to the Brown Act, the Brown Act should not be an excuse for hiding the ball, which is, there's plenty of openness here, nor a mechanism for hindering efficient and orderly meetings. It calls for uh, efficiency in government, yet should allow government to function responsibly and productively. It should not stifle government officials and impede the effective and natural operations of government. Um, so there's two occasions for the public to comment. It's open time and it's board actions. That's it. Uh, it, is, it is, you all need to keep this in mind. The president, at the t uh, whoever's president at the time, needs to run the, uh, needs to police that. The consent calendars, look at any, the way any other consent calendars are, are, are run in the county. Uh, the point is, it's not a discussion point. If there's discussion or questions or anything within a, a, an item on the consent calendar, it needs to be pulled off, made a separate item. Otherwise, consent calendar, you call the agenda item and you go for the vote. You don't take questions. You don't do the, the tradition that's, that's developed here for some bizarre reason of, you know, you're asking detailed questions uh, or, or allowing, you know, public questions on those items. That, those, those become then discussion points, which is against the whole reason for the consent calendar if you, if you look up what the basis of the consent calendars are. Manager's reports, chief reports, P&R reports, they are operations reports. They're not times for discussions. They are basically information that's being passed to you uh, and, and if there's a comment from the board, that's fine. But they do not, and they should not, have uh, extensive periods of, of, of discussion that's opened up to the public. Uh, if, if there are public questions, the public can approach the staff and, and filter that through the manager during the normal uh, business hours and allow them to do their job the way it's, uh, it should be normally done. And then finally, you know, don't be bullied and intimidated by unelected officials, who, individuals who claim that they're speaking for the public. I'm so tired of, of, of hearing that in these meetings. I speak for the community. I speak for the public. You speak for the public, and you speak to the community because you were, you were the elected. Everyone here has the right to you know, observe that and comment at the appropriate times and to say the wacky things that they, that they want to during open time. I'm all for that. I apologize for interrupting. Can I interrupt that was now? Like he I just said, I apologize for, for interrupting, but, but, but that is the appropriate time, and these meetings need to get back on track, and the CSD needs Just to get the business of the public back on track. Um, and if you attend another board meeting anywhere else, you'll see how what a relief it is to see how a healthy, healthy board meeting is Three run. minutes are up. So the current time practices are out of step, and they should be normalized. And that's a point of order that you should, if, if you're going to call it, you, are out of you need to be fair to everyone in the community. The president of the board in the rules allow for an extension of the time. To do her job. I'm saying that the, I'm that saying as a point of order job. that the president okay. has the authority to okay. be okay. able to extend okay. and allow it to, to be okay. wrapped up. So can you finish up and can you, everyone else please not interrupt? Okay, I see your hand. Thank, Thank you. you. That is the proper way that the meeting should be done. Thanks, thanks for that. I had wanted to just do this in a way to basically empower you. But uh, um, you know, I, 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 it's something that you can do starting now, and I hope you do. Thank you. Uh, hi, John. Yeah, I didn't come here to get in an argument or not, but he addressed me, so I feel I need to address it back. 
first bill, I said I was speaking wait, for. Wait, 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 wait. No, we're not getting personal. Okay. This is first, this time person. Open time items, not on the agenda. Okay. You can take it outside. Otherwise. Well, I got to respond. You can't let me respond since he called me wacky. He called us wacky. Look, All I'm no, saying. We're not. We're not going to go. And you give him four gonna... minutes. They went over there, and you won't be let, let me. Let's. Okay. I respect what you're doing, but. Okay. I disagree. I have I have something to say. First of all, so Bill, didn't you already talk? No, I didn't actually. So first of all, Bill is an architect. He's and he's a part-time uh, city manager. He is not a lawyer. I'm not a city manager. And wait, wait, again, uh, so whatever he does. Personal, so no, no, no. Hang on for a second. Topic. I'm I'm uh, the the issue is this is a legal entity, and you need to follow the law. We're going to hold you to the law. And we're also going to hold you to the uh, the rules that are established for meetings. And I'm afraid what uh, Bill, in his well-meaning thing, really misinterpreted the Brown Act. You need to go back to the original documents. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, but I am going to say really what I wanted to say during my my time is this is everyone here is constrained by law, by law and by our democratic customs. Um, I do agree that uh, our meetings could be run better, uh, but I also think that uh, attempts to squelch uh, public participation is wrong. And in fact, if you visit the Brown Act, you'll see why it's wrong. Um, there, the, the I think the League of Cities, we have lots of documentation that you can refer to, but please, really what everybody in this room is trying to accomplish is a better community, and that's where we should be focused, not on attacking to one another or second-guessing motivations. Let's do the right thing for the community. Let's listen to one another. Let's resolve like adults. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anything else? All right, let's move on to item G, district matters. Item number one, Marin County Open Space District Conti Fire Road Conversion to a Multi-Use Trail Project. Uh, I'll introduce them. I'm going to be coming in. John Campo, who also, uh, full disclosure, happens to be a member of our Direct Commission, working with the Park Open Space District. Uh, one of his colleagues is here as well. Uh, we've put plenty of materials in the packet regarding this uh, topic. Um, and with that said, I will turn it over to John, who prepared a presentation and I appreciate what you're doing here. Thanks, Eric. Um, so um, thank you, members of the board, for inviting me to come and speak on this project. And thank you to anybody in the audience that came to learn more about this project. This is, um, and as Eric pointed out, I am a resident of Marinwood, luckily, and I'm on the Parks Commission. So just so that's out there. And I'm also an employee of Marin County Open Space. Um, I've been working on this project for a couple of years now, and um, it started with the Region 3 designation. Region 3 is Marin County Park's um, region of roads and trails, which include um, this area here, Lucas Valley, Open Space, Ignacio, and Pacheco Valley. And during that process, we're looking at how to redesign our roads and trails in this region. And you know, well, I moved here six years ago, and at that time I realized I couldn't really hike or ride a bike easily up any of the roads or trails in this area because they're all really steep. And so looking at this area, I thought there's got to be some opportunities to improve the access. And um, the circled area there is Ponte Fire Road. Um, is um, Ponte Fire Road. And, so, looking a little closer at that area, let's see. Thanks. Um, there's some existing conditions that presented some opportunities as well as challenges. And 
this section of fire road right here is really steep. It's really steep, it's erosive, and, um, and it, there's, just, there's a lot of drainage issues. These red lines here are social trails, and social trails that, you know, none of these were designed. Um, the roads are old ranch roads and logging roads. Um, they're not drained properly. We had a landslide in 2005, and then in 2017 we found another fissure on the road that's potentially damaging. Um, so, you know, before I, I got too far down this path, the first place I, I started the conversation was with the fire department. And I reached out to um, Tom Roach, Marine Wood Fire Chief. Uh, Mark Kine at the time was um, the Nevada Fire Chief and the County Fire Departments. And I asked them about this road and what's the strategic value to them in using this road, um, recognizing fire protection for the neighborhood is very important. Obviously, right now, everybody's thinking about it. And they rec recognize that this particular road, they don't have a lot of strategic value for it. Um, Mark told me that they would never put firefighters on that road during a catastrophic event. It's too dangerous. Um, if there was a big fire in this area, they would attack it by the air. They wouldn't use people on that road. They would use bulldozers, probably. But at that, at that point, you know, a, a trail wouldn't really matter. So this, um, this photograph right here, for anybody that's familiar with this road, this is the lower section right here. That's where the road starts to get really steep. And it gets, this section of road right here is in the 50% range. Um, just to give you some standards, a, a, na a national standard for a trail is less than 10%. So this is 50%. And a road was cut here and then that eroded out so badly that another road was cut, and now neither one of them are drivable. Um, these two arrows here point to the landslides I was talking about earlier. Um, this one's been repaired, but you know it, this whole area is kind of suspect. And then again, these social trails that kind of spiderweb along the road. And yeah, that, as I was mentioning, um, meeting with the fire departments was the first place to start with the conversation. And once I got their kind of approval or blessing to go ahead and look at, explore other opportunities, that's what we started to do. And so we did a detailed assessment of the vegetation communities, the wildlife communities, and the geologic conditions of this area. And that really provided us a roadmap for opportunities and constraints, like what, what's possible, um, what's available to us, and, and what are some of the constraints. And the geology of this area um, proves to be possibly the most challenging. It's hard to see on this photo, but the white areas are, are relatively not steep. And then as the colors get darker, um, that becomes extremely steep. So we really tried to look at opportunities along the ridge line as they would more, be more geologically stable. And so once we, we kind of did the site analysis and, and get an understanding of what's out there, we engaged the community. Um, so we had a series of um, stakeholder meetings with the environmental community, um, the recreation community. We had um, office visits and, and field visits. Um, and this had been going on for a couple of years. And we developed a, a sense of what the shared goals were for this project. And so neighborhood fire protection was obviously an important factor for folks. Um, reducing the risk of landslides and erosion. Whatever we do, we want it to be sustainable. Um, we want it to be designed and control water. Protect the sensitive natural resources. So in our um, wildlife and vegetation assessments, we did not find any listed species or sensitive species. There was one um, rare annual plant about this big called Leptocyte fenicicularis, and the alternatives that we looked at were able to um, work around that, so that would not be impacted. Um, reduce the redundant roads and trails. So that's kind of a foundation of what we're looking at for roads and trails throughout Marin County is if you have two roads and maybe a trail that all go to the same place, you know, and maybe none of them are designed. Maybe all you need is one, and maybe just one good one that's well designed. And then improve trail connectivity and the visitor experience. So 
going back to what I said earlier, big, the Big Rock Trail that probably most of you know, um, going out 20 minutes to the west, that's really the only trail that we have in this area that's designed to get up to the bridge line. It's the only trail that is built with kind of a, a standard of less than 10% grade. Everything else on this side, um, on the east side, is kind of a steep fire road that was an old ranch road. And so just to give you some of the details of what the project would look like, and also to point out that this darker green area, this is Marinewood property. And then this lighter green on the, on the top is Marin County open space. And so let me point out a few. So we're right down here right now, community center. Here's Highway 1. This is the old IJ building right here. And so here's the Ponte Fire Road. And so what this project would look to do is to remove that road, the upper section of road. So right here, that's where it got really steep going up. And so that's 1.2 miles of road that we would um, abandon and, well, more than abandon, we would decommission it. So we would actively go in with heavy equipment and <laughs> address the drainage and control the, the, um, the erosion on that road. And then we'd go further and re remove all those social trails. And so we would do that a couple of ways. We would use equipment, again, if it was severely entrenched, to uh, address the drainage, and then otherwise physical, physically obstruct the trails with brush and, and close those trails. And then after really two years of discussion and, and evaluations, this is the alignment that we came up with. And, um, it looks like a big squiggly line, but it really is um, a really well-designed, well-thought-out trail that incorporates geology, vegetation, wildlife, um, and, um, and, every, and, and a world-class recreational amenity, which we don't have anything like that around here. So this, this alignment is 2.8 miles compared to the 1.2 miles. So, if you take a line and you stretch it out and you make it longer, you're going to reduce the grade. So um, you get a longer hike or bike ride, but it's also much more gentle and much more sustainable. And I don't, I don't know if you saw that, that just lit up this section here. So this piece is actually over the Regency Estates HOA. And so we have an easement over that, and that would just connect um, the trail to that existing fire road. And I should mention that this section here, in discussion with, with the fire department, they, they wanted to maintain this, as they saw this as having a strategic value to the, the neighborhoods on both sides in Nevada and Lorenwood. So this is still accessible by emergency vehicles. The next section here, this is what we're calling the, the connector trail. So this connects to the Pacheco pathway right here. That's a paved pathway. Yeah. and so. This is 0.5 miles, and then this is another 0.5 miles. So in total, this is 3.7 miles. And then I wanted to show you some photos of some of these areas, just in case you're not familiar with it. So let's look right here at the Pacheco Pathway. And so these are the entrances. Um, this is the paved pathway that Martin County Parks maintains, and it runs parallel to, the, um, to 101. And this is right about the middle of it. And right here is the old IJ building. So what we're looking to do is um, open up that fence line and create a connection to that paved pathway for cyclists or hikers. Um, actually, this trail would be open to equestrians as well. Um, you know, I've had discussions with the equestrian community. I don't know how much equestrian use would be on the trail, but it would be available for them. And then, so looking at this section of road, this is what we're calling the Lower Ponte Road. And so um, from right about here, going east, this section of road would stay intact. So this is it looking east. And most of this road is in pretty good condition. Um, it has a couple of steep pitches, but overall, it's much more gentle and accommodating. And again, this would stay as a road and be available to emergency services. And then from here, going up, would be the upper section. So right here, actually, would be a point where 
this section of road would be abandoned, decommissioned, and turned into a trail. And so we'll look at some of that area now. And so again, this is the upper section. You can see this um, rutting, and it's the you know all of our roads now as we go through this process, we design them with rolling dips. This road has none of that. So basically, when the water when the rain comes, the water just funnels right down the road, and it just channels out until it finds a spot that it pulls off the road, and then you have landslides. And so this is the site. If you've hiked up this road, these two posts here, there's um, a big retaining wall right here, and that's where the, the road failed back in 2005. Um, this is me with one of the botanists. Um, I, again, if you haven't been up there, the views are amazing. Uh, you have views of Mount Tam on one side and the bay on the other, and the proposed trail alignment takes full advantage of the views. Um, this would be a really special trail. I mean, it's, it's, it's would be one of the biggest projects we've ever looked at and mm -hmm. one of the most exciting ones. And so we, we have the um, fortune to have professional trail builders on our staff. That's what they do all year round. They work on the roads and trails. Um, they design them, they build them. They are very skilled in, in all the modern techniques of trail building. Um, so these are some of the projects that we've worked on in the recent years. And this would not be a group of volunteers going out on weekends with shovels. This would be um, you know, a world-class trail. So this is the, some of the work done on 680 recently. I don't know if you've been on that. But the width would be about five feet wide. It would be available for ATVs. Um, that was part of the discussion with the fire department is that they wanted the ability for search and rescue vehicles. So um, an ATV would be suitable for that. And then the, the part of the, the discussion where I'm asking, what I'm asking for from you is to grant an easement because as you see, a big majority of this trail is on Marinwood CSD property. And so, you know, obviously we manage the sections on our property now, but we don't manage this. Um, and so, if we were able to get an easement from you folks, then we could build you this trail for free. <laughs> it wouldn't cost you anything. Um, so, Marin County would do all the work, um, we'd do the planning, and we would build it, and then we would maintain it for future use. Mm -hmm. That's my presentation. Do you have questions? Thank you. Um, well, I'm going to ask you this question. Since this is going to be right now, let me give you our way. Yeah. Are we going to? Yeah. So, can somebody, can somebody I'm going to make a motion to approve the, um, the easement. Actually, we are. I, I stop you for a second. Um, you're not approving the easement uh, or the permit that they're constructed this time. With, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, lead-in memo, two things. One, um, Mr. Campbell presented this to the Department of Rec Commission last time. The commission did vote uh, unanimously to approve the project in principle. Uh, I have sent these documents to the district's legal counsel to be reviewed um, and any opinions provided. Uh, we do not have that back at this point in time. Uh, the move to the board at this point in time, should you so desire, what staff would recommend the board do is approve the project in principle and authorize the district manager to negotiate and execute the grants for trail easement and permit to enter and construct, both of which contingent upon final legal review. I make a motion of that. <laughs> One of those, please. Second. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, discussion. Any questions for John? Also. I think the motion basically uh, took care of the questions that I was going to ask. Subject to further legal approval. Okay. Um, it's my second time that I'm doing this presentation, and I think it's a tremendous opportunity for our community. We don't have these resources at our disposal neither will we ever be able to afford those. And to have the expertise and the resources and the time to do such a thorough analysis 
and provide not only our community but you know humanity like community of Marin County and then some um, with with such a wonderful recreation opportunity there is really only way to, only one way to vote so thank you so much and yes thousand times yes I'm excited this is uh, I've been on that road for 20 years and it's gradually it's horrible right now uh, even even the road that you were saying that it's clear because the weeds everything is closed in the thing it's it's basically a single track so anything that we can do to get this thing moving I'm all for it I, I think the, the concept of building the trail as proposed decommissioning the roads as proposed and social trails is great but I have a couple of issues that I want to bring up. First, uh, the staff report says that the commission voted to approve the project in principle. First question, I thought the Parks and Rec Commission, our Parks and Rec Commission, was an advisory agency and they should have been recommending that we approve the project, not that they approve the project. That's essentially what they did. Okay. The other thing is what does it mean approve in principle? means the project as described you approve of what you uh, are not approving at this time are these final documents you're going to be authorizing you've seen the documents based on final legal review and recommendations for the district manager to uh, negotiate and execute both of those documents with representatives from the county i have a concept problem with the documents I was told way back when this was just started, this is a great deal for Marinwood because it gets us out of the liability of potential landslides on this property. Somehow that's missed in the documents. The only liability we get released from is if somebody using the trail gets hurt. That's all it says there. Now, all of that will be addressed within the legal review. But I have a better solution to it than even messing with that document. Uh, property, the parcel 164-290-88, which is the piece that these, this trail is in, was dedicated or deeded to the Rinwood CSD at no cost to the CSD from the developer of the Las Colinas Ranch subdivision. I suggest that Marinwood give that parcel to the Marin County Open Space District and be done with it. Then they can build their trails and as I understood, have any liability if there is any after they are done. If we retain ownership, they're going to do a great job of making changes, but we apparently will uh, approve in principle. If anything happens relative to a landslide or a drainage problem in the future, we're going to be named as party to it, and we will not have relieved ourselves of that liability. I suggest we. Uh, make a magnanimous gift of that parcel to the district since it didn't cost us anything. It isn't part of the, pro the open space that we purchase. So I vote no on the motion. Alright. Um, I'm going to open it up to comments from the public. Any comments from the public on this? Stephen? Yeah, so I, uh, first of all, a little bit about me. I used to lead uh, bicycling programs when I was a kid, so I, I'm not anti-bicycle at all, but I do have some concerns about this because it, it does appear that it's being um, developed for a single track, and while you call it multi-use, I think in reality it's not going to be a pleasant place for equestrians and, and hikers. That may still be okay because we've got lots of land, but my real concern and this is where I don't really have expertise, is the loss of the fire road. My understanding, the fire road serves t uh, two purposes. One is for access, but the other important reason for a fire road is to provide a break. And I was at the meeting the other day, we were all talking about wildfires, it's all ever present on our mind, and so I'm concerned that, um, that we're losing fire protection and maybe Chief Gray is, uh, can uh, comment on that, but um, 
until that, I, I, I feel uncomfortable with, with this transition because of the, uh, the fire issue and the herbs, uh, herbs concerns, which I think are valid. I'm not 100% certain that you know, we need to give everything to them, but, but I like the idea of us getting out of the liability business um, for the, the trail. So you know, you're going from 14 feet down to five feet. That's a lot less fire protection. That's uh, you know, potential pedestrian collisions and stuff like that. I think it's fine that the, 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 uh, the bikes are there, but I would just want to make sure there's room for horses and people too. So I, I, I would hope that you would not approve tonight until you can answer those questions. First, I want to say that's a great idea. Don't make it and let them have the, the county have the liability. As long is is that something that has been sent to council, or is this something new that's in the proposal? I mean, I can answer that. It's, it's been offered before. There's there's no interest from <coughs> Marin County Park to take on that. Land. There's no interest. No. Okay. And then the other question I have is. Renwood didn't pay any money for this work, or did some of our money, Renwood's money, uh, for the for the work that's happened so far? Yes. No, none, and there would be none moving forward. And out of the county that's paying for it, is that Measure A money from the county? It would be Measure A. It would be. It would be. Great. Great. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Uh, I I love the idea. I'm a resident here. I think it's great. Um, you know, the similar one at um, Big Rock is great. I hike there, I bike there. Um, I have plenty of people who use it uh, and share it and share it. It's, it's a great um, benefit, I think, to this community. I, I um, strongly support it and I encourage you to do the same. I'm curious, though, with your idea, if they're not going to do that, to not do it and then ask that that's something, the time frame we know now is that it's not an option, I would, I would still encourage you to do it. I think it's a huge benefit to you in so many ways. Good evening. Um, Todd Berenger, been a resident for 15 years here. I've got uh, two kids and this great time of divide amongst uh, our nation and, and everything that's going on. I think John Campos did an amazing job consulting with the fire department to address those needs. And obviously, if they've had time to look it over, I'm confident uh, in their assessment to say that it's probably not something that's, uh, that's usable for a fire break or whatever, otherwise they would sign off on this. So uh, I strongly encourage you guys to support uh, this position and, uh, and grant the easement. I think it would be a great time to get our kids and families and up on the trails and not hiking at 50% grade, 10% is much easier on my technology. Thank you. My name is Jason Montour. I've been here uh, six, eight years, 10 years? Anyway, um, I think this proposal is fantastic. You know, the every time we've gone up Queenstone or any other way, it's, you know, it's unrelenting. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, trying to enjoy the views with, you know, the kids you know, while we're all bent over trying to catch air, it's just not the way we want to do it. And, you know, the, the size of this trail, the five foot width side of the trail is, is, is more like a triple track than a single track. It's, it's, there's a lot of room there. And as a cyclist and a hiker, um, you know, I, I make sure, you know, we take good care to, to share the road, share the trail. Um, and I think that this would be a fantastic place for all of us to enjoy. Sorry, I didn't say my name. I don't know if that matters. Go ahead. Marcus Mueller, with two kids as well. So. <laughs> Thank you. I'd also like to strongly support it. And thanks, John, for the uh, great presentation. It was extremely informative. And uh, I, I knew very little about it, but now I'm extremely excited about it. Um, I hiked Queenstone just the other day. And I, it's the only way to get up there is that side. And I live right, right where this trail would, this proposed trail would start. Um, I never even go up that side because it's just too difficult. It's, it, and so this trail would clearly make uh, 
we create an opportunity for a lot of people to be able to access that entire ridge line, which would be a great uh, recreational opportunity for a lot of folks. Um, so yeah, I strongly support it. Lloyd Miller, by the way. Two kids as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I have two kids too. So. <laughs> I'm a church man wearing the uh, same two kids. Um, <laughs> I just have a question, a great presentation, totally support it. Uh, a lot of us access the trail from the top of Heatherstone Lane and go through the, around the gate and up that way. Is that, would that still exist? Is that? That, that would exist. That's a public access point. Um, in my discussions with the Regency Estates HOA, that, those are the people that live right there. They were actually excited about this project because of that connector trail that connects the trail to the Pacheco pathway. Because they don't mind hikers going up and down that steep paved road, but they, they, are, they are always wary of bikes coming down. And um, when they saw this proposal, they were like, oh great, you'll get them off of our road and connect them onto that pathway. And it is, it's a, it's kind of a rare opportunity. I could work at the county for another 20 years and not have that nexus of opportunity. So I, I think it's going to be better for them, too. But yeah, you'll still be able to hike in that way. I mean, you could still go in with your bike, too, but there'll be a better alternative yeah. for you, so you're less likely to. Yeah. Okay, and then you go to Oh, I just wanted to know, is five feet wide enough because when you're dog walking and somebody's going this way and somebody's coming this way five feet's not wide enough so it's the big rock trail is i don't know if you've been on that one no rock, i haven't been, just um, queenstone so and the big rock big. ridge trail most of our trails are about that width and um you know we try and balance the environmental impacts of trails with the the recreational needs and Five feet, five feet seems like a width that does accommodate everybody. It, it's a standard that most agencies use. I mean, there's actually trail building equipment that makes the trail that width, so you almost can't go smaller. You could go bigger if you went, if you went two passes with that piece of equipment, but then you've also got more water to drain, um, more chances of erosion, more environmental impact. So five feet the, is the standard that we go with. Yeah. Roger Noyes, I've been a resident for about seven years here in the neighborhood, and I'm a biker, I'm a hiker. The main thing that makes me excited about this is the access, right? Like, even as a healthy 40-something, right, climbing up that Queenstone is ridiculous. And when I think about the, my plans to never move from Marinwood because I love it so much and I love this community, the access to that point and the access to be able to go to that ridge line as I get older and my kids get older, right? And obviously, <clears throat> having a trail that is professionally maintained and professionally built, I actually think it's more of a liability to not do this than it is to, to actually, you know, it's more of a liability, excuse me, it's more of a liability to actually not do it, yeah. Because if you do it, it's going to get maintained. And the stuff that is, uh, those fire roads that are, that are falling down and are, are becoming, you know, just beaten down and the, the water is not running the right way, like, that's a liability, right, for, for access. So I, so I think it's, I think John's done a great job. I echo everybody's sentiments in support of this, in strong support of it. Um, and I hope you approve it. With two kids. With two kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, John, just, I, I wanted to one your hand pose this question. There was no interest in the town to take over the. No. John, do you want me to talk about that? Um, sure, if you want to. I mean, we, we've been, this has come up before. Um, My name is James Raves. I'm the senior planner with the McKinney I do real estate and environmental review. So I've been, I've been with the county uh, for about 15 years, and I've actually talked to previous managers about acquiring this land. It's just not been a priority for our open space district to, to pick up the interest in this land. Um, we 
we're focusing on other areas in the county and we have other priorities and I just don't see it happening. John, I think you mentioned this at, a, at least once before the Park and Rec meeting because that topic did come up, so I was already aware of that. Um, I would like to echo the gentleman in the back comments about having a professionally built and maintained um, set of hiking trails. I think that is absolutely in our benefit and subject to working out some of the liability issues or concerns. Um, I don't see any reason not to move forward with this project. Any other comments from anybody? Or questions? I just wanted to join in that I have two children. <laughs> is there anyone in the room that does not have to be? <laughs> well, I just want to say a personal question. Thank you, John, yeah. for your service on this. What a cool opportunity yeah. to mix like so many different spheres. So thank you for you know your work on this and for bringing it to the board. And your family's here too. I know. <laughs> oh, <hi. Yeah>. Chickens. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yay. And we'll name the trail the Campbell Trail. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to item G2. This is the year of first quarter of profits and lost budget to actual comparison report. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're going to have to be Thank you for coming. Come back more often. Thanks for that point. Good as we 
have uh, any, any variety of. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have a few. Okay. Few down ones. Okay. Um, starting with page one. Um, on the revenue um, expense reimbursement, which is 4570110, um, is, was, um, is that? Uh, but all right, go ahead. Expense reimbursements, uh, if I look at this within the line items, I think that this is almost entirely wreck. Um, the majority of those are going to fall under, and Luke can probably speak to this and encourage them to. Uh, a lot of the times what, where we recognize expense reimbursements has to do with our first aid trainings uh, that we offer through Red Cross because we pay Red Cross in advance for those, uh, for the certification fees, and then those are recouped. Uh, so that is actually just the fee portion of it and not the general revenue portion of it. And then um, service contract to revenue for 99920 right underneath, is that the current one? Uh, as far as the budgeted amount goes, yeah, that is for uh, County Farm. Okay, so, so the Juvenile the Hall, Rotary Village. Exactly. Uh, That's what I thought. Um, advertising sales. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what, what kind of funds you said for that 91 grand. That's for our contract with the county for the county farm area. Uh, the little area that kind of exists out in CSA 13 that we do every year. Thank you. Um, the advertising sales, is that basically sales for the review? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And um, moving on to page three, um, the capital outlay new equipment, is that the park truck? Um, no, that is actually, uh, and this is just always where it's been captured, which probably isn't the best space. That's actually the annual payment for the engine lease. Engine lease? Yeah, for the fire engine. Oh. It's not, and lease isn't even the right term. It's our annual payment. It's not like we give it back when we're, right, right, right. our lease runs up. Um, what what number was that that you were just What's talking that? about? It is a lease, it's a... Lease to purchase. It's a, yeah, it's a bank loan, basically, is what it's through. And the... But we will own it when it's done. Ms. Perry, excuse me, what number, can you refer to the numbers so that I can see um, them on? It's page three, next to last, it says capital outlay new equipment. That's what we've been talking about. But what is the number at the beginning of it? Four, four. Five two two zero nine one six. Thank you. That's what I'm looking at. And right above that um, is the improvements. Five two two zero nine one zero. Is that for the uh, kitchen? Right. Uh, some of it is correct. Uh, did I, I thought I put a, uh, did a note on that. Did I not? There was no. Uh, I'm sorry. It's quite all right. Because in the um, the reason I'm asking is because on page nine there's a capital outlay and the budgeted amount is twelve thousand but we expended forty one thousand so I'm right but that's... page nine would be a departmental and right. not district wide right so then um, wouldn't oh, for fire yeah the majority of that there's two things it's going to be the carryover from the kitchen so at it's some point carryover. we'll have to do an amendment. And it is also the uh, HVAC install that was done in the firehouse. That was a budgeted item. That was that was the twelve thousand was the HVAC piece. But uh, for at the time we approved the budget, we still didn't have the completion timing for the kitchen, so it'll just need to be an amendment going forward. It's made known at that time that we're expecting cost to carry into mm -hmm. right, yeah. right. It was budgeted last year, not this year. Finally, on last page in your uh, write up. Uh, what are MEM tune-ups? Um, net energy metering. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. True ups, I think is what it's called. True ups, yes. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Yeah. Are there questions, comments from the board? Here. General question. The listing is for the revenue expenses for the first quarter, mm -hmm. but the budget is for the entire year. Correct. And our expenditures or revenue aren't linear across the whole year. Right. Which makes it 
really difficult to figure out where we really are. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's why I try to put some of the notes. No, I appreciate the notes. notes. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, some of these are annual expenditures. Some actually are linear, things like utilities, so on and so forth. Um, but I can't. It, I could go in and say, great, show me a, a quarter of the actual budget, but then that's not going to be representative because a lot of these things, uh, such as uh, you know the unfunded pension liabilities or our uh, general insurances, we pay in lump sums that the, usually within the first month of the fiscal year. So we do not budget on a monthly basis, we budget on an annual basis. Correct. Just a general question. First of all, thank you for the notes. They explained just about everything I needed to see. Um, one thing from the work on the capital expenditures spreadsheet about two years ago, we did have the floor refinishing for the community center somewhere there. Did it happen sooner than anticipated? Um, I don't know about sooner. I'd have to revisit what we anticipated originally, and that's actually one of the sheets that I have been working on and do want to bring. Uh, uh, to the table on a future meeting, just simply didn't get a chance to do it for this particular meeting given the, the events of the last month uh, and uh, resources allowed. Uh, if you need some energy from me on that, I'll be happy to meet with you. That would be lovely. I would gladly accept it. Um, but in terms of anticipated versus needed, um, you know, it's one of those the more use and wear it gets, the more often it needs to be done in terms of refinishing, uh, which is also different than full-blown sanding and resealing okay. and doing everything else. Fair enough. Just a general question on mirror. Do I understand that we're paying an old bond measure, a new bond measure, and operating costs to mirror? Uh, I actually don't think we are paying a new bond measure because I think that got approved by the voters uh, and is being taxed directly to the voters. Chief Gray could probably tell me That's better right. on that. But we are paying the old bond measure as well as a refinancing note uh, that is very minor in comparison. The refinancing note is the third. That's the one that happened in 2007. Okay, all right, got it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so there are two different components. That was, mm -hmm. Plus that's an better, right. a better answer than I had hoped, because, or that I had thought, because I thought we were not paying the new bond measure. Um, but, yeah, no, we helps. are, yeah, we're, the agency is not paying Correct. the new bond measure. Correct. We're paying on the older uh, bond measure than the refinancing note. As well as the operating costs, which are stated in a different line. Correct. Understood. Thank you. All of which have all been paid. Yep. Alrighty. Anything else from the board? Questions, comments from the public? Um, but this is kind of what Mr. Naylor was talking about, but I my question is a little bit different. The community center floor sanding and refinishing, number five two two oh three one zero. I. Which department is that included in, and how much did that cost? Five two two zero three one zero. It's under recreation. Land and building maintenance. Right, land and building maintenance affects all three of those departments. That specific expense would have been applied to rep. How much did it cost? I don't remember. I don't have that number immediately in front. But you applied it to all. No, it would have applied to, rec to the recreation department. To the rec department. Correct. The entire rec money was for the rec department. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen? Yeah, so I looked at this earlier tonight and I thought, wow, why are we so far off our, on our budget? But uh, fortunately, Irv clarified that we're only looking at a quarter and we're comparing it to a year-long budget. I'm wondering if there's a different way that this can be presented so we understand how we're doing, um, you know, period by period. Um, I don't think this is a very uh, informative uh, uh, report because of that. that. We really don't know where we stand. Um, and we do know we have uh, expenses that happen on a periodic basis as well as revenues. Um, I was one thing that did pop out to me, and that was public programs, and it looks like we made a grand total of 7,000, 9,000? I forget what it was. Um, and that seemed rather low to me, but I guess, I, I mean, you know, if, 
if you're a salesman working for me and you brought me these numbers, I'd go, well, <laughs> you guys got to work a little harder because I, I don't see I don't see the progress. Um, I, I don't know. I think I think I think the the uh, the controls uh, need improvement uh, because I don't think anyone in this room actually understands uh, where we stand. Thank you. One comment, real quickly. Um, would it be true that um, the second fiscal quarter, when revenues have come in, will generate a more reasonable picture of our um, after the, after the revenues are received and the variance report after the end of the fiscal year, again where revenues are received, would generate a, a little bit more of a perfect view of our operations and sure. mm -hmm. not true. Sure. Yeah. That's just the way it is. We don't get quarterly payments, we get semi-annual payments. Uh, in terms of tax revenue. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Let's put it up on item G3. Did you need anything? That was just for you, right? Yes, and we're reviewing. Thank you. So item G3, resolution 2018-09, fixing the employer's contribution under the Public Employees Medical and Hospital Care Act. Existing policy lacked is it didn't uh, provide any specification as to where those reserve funds would be held. Um, so this attempts to clean this up based entirely on feedback received at the last meeting. with uh, that ultimately on an accounting balance sheet will uh, reduce the district's overall liability as opposed to not having anything stated because this is the board stating we will do 60,000 their projections show that a minimum $60,000 annual payment would relieve the district of this 
viability within 30 years um, at the current status quo. Um, with Obviously that said, uh, well, actually our status quo has reduced because status quo is based on total staffing uh, and future anticipation of staffing. So we've actually uh, already eliminated one position since that point with the retirement of Chief Roach and bringing on the uh, Santa Fe to provide Chief Officer services. So those things would be impacted. Uh, that won't you won't realize that until we do our next full actuarial study, which won't happen until the fiscal year after next, um, at which point they will take a new census of our staffing and, and levels and go from there. Um, but it will provide a more uh, advantageous discount rate within the actuarially accepted guidelines. The total obligation, however, will be growing. It's not going to be diminishing the time. Uh, the total the total liability will actually diminish because you will have money set aside to address that liability specifically with each contribution into the trust. Which is correct. I mean, yes, 30, 30 years basically pay off. Okay. Correct. At, at that $60,000 rate, it should be noted that this year actually the board allocated 100000 towards it. Um, so you're paying it down that much quicker in terms of growing the trust. It's the pension rate I'm thinking of. This yeah, it very well could be. That liability is absolutely growing. But this, for OPEP purposes, will begin to uh, yeah, no, it, positively I, impact that. It's definitely the way to go, in my opinion. As long as health care benefit or health care costs. And that is the problem. So the, the there is a, you are correct. There's a lot of variables there. <laughs> okay. Uh, questions, comments from the board? Questions, comments from the public? Okay. Uh, call the question, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Item G5, resolution 2018 11, appointing a representative and alternate to, the, to Mira. Um, we have another little plenty of vote about this, don't we? Yeah, and again, I give you a detailed staff memo, and I would certainly invite Chief Gray to comment in on this as he is more familiar with uh, Mira and the governing board, I assume, than I am, not to put you on the spot, Chief. Uh, but uh, the bylaws of Mira and all the participating agencies basically say, state that each agency uh, participating, as which Marinwood is, needs to appoint a representative to the Mira governing body and preferably an alternate representative as well. The representative can either be a board member, a managerial level staff, um, and to quickly get Chief Gray off the hook here before the question gets asked, um, he cannot serve as our representative because technically he is not an employee or an elected officer of Marinwood, nor can anybody else in Santa Fe. So I tried that out in uh, a long time ago, <laughs> so, and they said no. Um, so it, again, it can be a board person, it can be a staff person. Uh, they meet on Wednesdays. I actually meant to include uh, Maureen Cassingham, who is the executive director of Mira, did send me a calendar of future meetings. Uh, and it is entirely my oversight that it was not included. They meet on Wednesdays, um, typically once a month, and typically, I believe, at 3 or 3.30 p.m. Last two and 3.30. Yeah, 3.30. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of it, obviously, is going to be based on availability. I would tell you uh, those particular days, um, I can generally make myself available at the, the direction of the board as well, unless there's somebody on the board who doesn't strong interest in wanting to do it, then I'm happy to fill in as an alternate to I can play whatever role. All right, thank you. So, this is what it is. Appointing a group. Um, I mean, is there anybody on the board who's interested in this? I have a question. Of the other 24 agencies, uh, what's the preponderance of their primary designee, is it a staff person or an elected official? It's pretty well mixed. I've gone to one or two meetings, and again, Chief Gray might be able to speak to this better. There are, you know, there's a mix of elected officials versus a mix of uh, management level staff. Uh, I, mean, we say it's, I don't know that it's 50-50 or 60-40, but I don't think that it's a strong sway in either direction. Thank you. Uh, thoughts? Um, I personally cannot make this 
students um, that are like very passionate about math. I'm sorry, I'm studying it publicly. Yeah. Um, but um, so I would be thrilled if you would be able to attend it on um, district's behalf. That's my personal. I'll, uh, I'll volunteer in some capacity. Mirror scares me to death, but I, will, I need to get closer to that. So. so that sounds like perhaps we need a motion to for an appointment alternate. If we have somebody who wants to make a motion. I have another question. Oh, sorry. Uh, Former board members can't do it here, but I'm sorry. Thank you, but that wasn't the question. <laughs> no, I'm just, Jeff sounded interested because he's concerned about it. You're said you're available, and I realize you have lots and lots of spare time to attend other meetings. Uh, I'm just, from what I'm hearing, I think, and the smiles that I see, uh, I, I would recommend that Jeff be appointed with uh, Eric as the alternate. Is that the motion that you're making? Oh, I'm sure it's a motion, yes. Um, second that. Okay, now we have a little discussion, or more discussion. Is there any more discussion up here? Okay, any discussion out there? Can I make a comment? <laughs> I would say to recall that Chief Roach asked you several months ago if you would be the representative, and I thought I heard you say yes. So I think maybe you could be the alternate. I can be a second alternate. I'm happy to be a second alternate, but that's why I wanted. That's why I specifically actually thought this to me, agendize it to get other interests because I mean I'm happy to fill in, but it's not. Uh, I, I went to the meeting and it's something about the the topic's not exactly like my. Okay, because I thought you had already started going to them with Chief Roach. I I went to one, but that. Okay. Okay. Like I'm happy to serve if necessary, but if there are other people have a little bit more um, enthusiasm, then I think that's wonderful. Thanks. Um, all right, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank, Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Eric. All right, so we are not that far off from our schedule, you guys. Fire department matters, the item H one, Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary. And welcome, Chief, right? Good evening. Uh, thank you, uh, President and Board. It's uh, really my honor and privilege to serve you as fire chief. That was effective November 1st. Maybe a, a brief background, uh, a little personal. Uh, I've been a professional firefighter since 1978. I've served as uh, fire chief uh, actually in San Rafael since 2007. Uh, I've been happily married for 37 years, and my wife and I also have two children. Brothers and, and um, one of those brothers actually has eight children. Um, they both live in Marin, one in San Rafael and one in uh, Nevada. So please accept uh, our appreciation for uh, your, your confidence in this opportunity. Uh, thus far, uh, we believe it's been a smooth transition. Uh, we're uh, doing everything we can to get up to speed and uh, provide you with uh, what we believe will be uh, outstanding service and some expanded capacity. Uh, the Marine Wood firefighters, the, the CSD uh, staff, and the, and the community have been very welcoming and helpful. Uh, you really do have some great people, and uh, we'll do our best to support them in the best way uh, possible. Um, I, I'd like to you know, uh, make a few comments about the fire activity right now. Uh, there's clearly smoke in the air, uh, and it's a significant event occurring uh, north of us, about 140 miles uh, in the area of Paradise, and then in Southern California. Uh, it is truly a fire siege. It has wreaked havoc on uh, these, these communities. Uh, both the, uh, the Camp Fire and the Woolsey Fire are um, still far from being contained. Uh, the Camp Fire, the most destructive of the two uh, in Paradise, it, I don't know if you've been to Paradise, but it literally did wipe out that town. The devastation is severe. Uh, it's no doubt that the, uh, the death toll will continue to rise beyond uh, the, the 40 to 44 people that have been identified. There are still 200 missing 
and there are nearly 9,000 structures that have been identified in its display, uh, and this is arguably the deadliest fire in the history of the state of California. Interestingly enough, seven of the largest now uh, lost fires in the history of the state have all occurred within the last 12 months. So what we're seeing here is a fundamental shift, and I think in whether you look at scientifically, whether the equator is moving north, climate change is real, uh, the continued drought, expansion into these wildland areas with growth and population uh, and the vegetation and these factors of the wind. Um, we experienced three red flag uh, events over the last uh, uh, three weekends. Um, here within the state and here locally in, in Marin. And um, right now there's about 10,000 firefighters that are fighting uh, on the line in uh, San Rafael. We have a nine, five uh, to the north and four uh, to the south and those that are supporting us uh, here at home. Really significant effort. Uh, locally here in San Rafael, we uh, have both active and retired members that lost homes and, and this recent uh, fire in, in paradise, and um, I think it's uh, a measure of, of what can come. Uh, we need to be prepared for. I had the opportunity to be able to speak with uh, community members assembled last week at a CERT uh, community-wide meeting uh, and uh, crime prevention, and I think we've got some work ahead of us. Unfortunately, there's a number of things I think we can do, um, becoming a firewise community and and trying to really amplify our efforts where it's really gonna take all of us working together. Um, I think you've made a positive step uh, forward in building some additional capacity. That trail system's also gonna provide a 2.8 uh, mile buffer. Uh, so while there's some balanced needs with the removal of more vegetation, I think we'll be likely coming to you in the future uh, with some more recommendations of what we can do locally here uh, to bolster not only our response capability, but our prevention and preparedness capability, which I think will be um, very important. Uh, we're here to best support um, your efforts and what you would like to see done in the community, and I stand uh, ready to do that. I did provide a written report and also uh, a, a narrative and, and uh, some statistics. We'll be refining some of those. Um, I might also mention we're going to be plotting some for you on a map so that you can see at a glance exactly who's going where and things, and we're happy to provide any expanded uh, capability in terms of you know, truly understanding response and activity levels and all of that. The uh, force multiplier that's in effect is, um, and we appreciate uh, Chief Roach's service, but you actually now have six uh, chief officers at your service, and in addition to a dozen um, paid professional staff uh, that work directly for San Rafael, but now are available to you. So some of those uh, members are already um, working in the community, vegetation management specialists, yeah. fire prevention inspectors, um, our emergency manager, uh, Quinn Gardner, has already, already been very active um, with Ryan Wood, and so please call upon us um, as the needs arise. But again, we're happy uh, to support you and feel that together uh, will better. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there are questions, comments? Um, Ms. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Um, very much looking forward to the new chapter. And um, I hope that our fire commission can feed off your energy and um, ideas. Uh, I personally feel it would be lovely to have uh, more predictable chipper days throughout the community so um, the residents can plan accordingly and um, take advantage of a machine that's set place, set time, yes. uh, reliable. I know that there have been some abuses of this in different communities. I hope it doesn't happen. I don't really know how to address that. Um, another um, um, thought that you know we, we don't have to look too far uh, for inspiration for is um, the Upper Lucas Valley being a firewise community. That's a tremendous opportunity again for our fire commission to to take on. And I hope with your experience and knowledge, you can guide them and, and form a collaborative effort to um, move it 
forward. Um, just a silly little question, but I just am not knowledgeable that much. Um, average response time for fire engine is five minutes, 36 seconds. What's the golden standard? That's well within it. It's actually uh, any, anything I think you see that's less than seven minutes is uh, well within an acceptable range. And so this is a composite of both code two, the designation between code two and code three, code three, red lights and siren. Some calls are actually a response is actually code two without red lights and siren. That could be uh, an emergency medical call, but not one that's life threatening or critical. That Think about it as assisting someone uh, getting up that has fallen or something like that. Um, so this is a, a quick composite, and we're able to actually drill into more details if you would like. But it's a, it's a good standard, and you um, have the benefit of uh, rapid response. That I think is you know, ultimately the result of that is you know they say big fire starts small, <coughs> so we're able to address things in their earlier stages uh, quickly, and you benefit from a good response time here uh, throughout the community. So far in your newly formed marriage, uh, what um, obstacles have you seen? What problems have arisen that you are looking forward to resolving? I think it's just maybe getting. Uh, uh, working with uh, some of the different organizations and uh, providing a good comfort level in terms of the, of the transition, uh, including the schools um, that I know we're going to do. I think I'm attending a uh, school meeting next week and have been in touch with them. So I really want to make sure there's a, a solid presence and they know they can rely upon us. And then uh, working through likely um, departmental and operational functions, uh, administrative, uh, revenue functions, making sure we're maximizing opportunities and uh, being as efficient uh, as, as we can, um, and, uh, and certainly uh, standardizing and improving um, things wherever possible as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Here. First, uh, welcome to Marinwood, Chief Gray. Thank you. Uh, I attended the, the CERT meeting I'm sorry the other four board members didn't because it was a great presentation by the chief and the staff members that was there. Uh, I think it would have been very enlightening. Uh, maybe he could sometime when there's time at a meeting copy some of that or repeat some of it. It's, it's on it was, video. In any event, uh, it was a good presentation uh, that you uh, missed. Uh, I, a couple of questions. On your business card, it says Center Hill Fire Department, I think it's ISO 1. Yes. And that's the highest rating of the insurance industry for Center Hill. Am I correct? Yes. Where, where are we? Well, we're below that in, in Marinwood. Um, and uh, we're going to be evaluating that uh, in the near future uh, to determine whether there are any opportunities to increase, uh, increase that rating. Generally speaking, a rating of uh, anywhere from uh, uh, four to three to two, and it's a one through 10, um, so one being the highest, and it's a reflection on not only your ability to suppress a fire. This doesn't reflect on really emergency medical activity or anything. It's truly fire suppression and then prevention. Um, but it's a, the result is a insurance rating per se. So the lower the ISO class, the generally the better benefit you have for an insurance rating. Um, and the greatest beneficiaries are really commercial properties. Uh, residences don't receive as much of a benefit, but there is some. And some of that's still really intangible. Um, but that's one of the things in the, uh, as we look through opportunities for Marinwood, much like a Firewise community and other designations, we're going to see what it's going to do. Uh, I've not looked through the most recent survey, determine where points could actually potentially be uh, earned to improve the rating yet. But we will in the future, and I'm happy to report back to the board with some of our recommendations. Generally, those ratings are uh, looked at uh, every 10 years. Uh, or you can request a review um, should you feel you've got an opportunity to lower your rating. Well, I understand that yeah, that it primarily affects commercial 
structures, which we have extremely few. Steel. But it can't help but mean there's better fire protection. That's correct. So I would hope that we could work towards reducing our ISO rate. Uh, last question, and it's really, I know the answer already because uh, Eric gave it to me, but I would really like it to be in the minutes. And so I'll ask, is the kitchen remodeling project completed? And how did we do relative to the budget? The kitchen is done. It's actually a very nice kitchen if you haven't had a chance to go see it all. Uh, John Pope did a really good job putting it together. Uh, he came in approximately $1,000 under the contracted amount with him. So a little under, but nothing of any extraordinary amount. Uh, uh, and again, it was approximately 1000 in budget. It's a done wrap project. He's been paid in full uh, based on all of his buildings. And uh, we move on. Great. Thank you. Anything else from the board? Yeah, I think we uh, improved ISO rating within the last two years. Recently, yeah, and I don't remember, I was thinking the same thing, um, and I don't remember exactly what it had improved to. I'd have to kind of go back through uh, uh, former Chief Rose's notes. Um, I, I, I don't recall exactly where it's at, but I do know it did improve with the last round of uh, uh, reviews. Yeah, review, better term. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Do you have a uh, Marinwood email address? We're working on that. Okay. Yes. All right. Fair enough. And right now, it's um, <coughs> the uh, message you'll receive is to make contact with me at a specific email address. So that we've actually been receiving con contact through that right now. Okay. I'd like to send my question to you an email rather than bore you with them now. Right. But one thing does strike, and that is uh, these horrific fires that have happened. Um, they continue to point, although I don't know if it's been corroborated yet, to PG&E lines. Okay. I guess I'd like to have an understanding in all of this space if we're if PG&E is even an issue in any of our open space, and if so, um, what can we do to make sure that the lines are safe? Um, another <laughs> topic that's come before um, in recent years, and particularly given the fact that our climate is changing and it's not quite so horrible to camp outside as our homeless encampments, um, which have been a problem. And I'd like to make sure that you're aware of it in our area as well as in your area and how we can make sure that those are nipped as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome. Anything? Okay. Anything from the public? Stephen? Yeah. So I was at the meeting, and I taped the meeting, and it's up on YouTube, and I posted on my website. Um, and uh, I'm real excited that we have Chief Gray, because I think he's going to uh, do good things for our department and lead our fine department and so good 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 um, do you have some concerns um, at that meeting there was a, a code officer who spoke I forget his name but he was talking about um, making sure residences were I guess code compliant and I'm just wondering if we're going to see <coughs> code officers knock on our door um, to inspect our properties make sure we're following code. Um, I, it, it was presented as a volunteer thing, but, but I don't know if that volunteer would, thing would turn into something else. So that's, that's one question. Um, and secondly, uh, because that meeting was really great, uh, we were talking about fire breaks, and there's a wide range of uh, understanding about how big a fire break should be be what constitutes a danger. And I just want to point out that there's, uh, we're going to have to find a balance because some people want huge, huge fire breaks, and other people, and I can consider myself one of those, want to make sure that there's a balance with the uh, natural resources, that we don't <laughs> overdo it. I mean, we could, you know, pave over. The valley, but then what would we have? And then third, um, the uh, the issue with the 
uh, the fire break on uh, on the Ponte Fire Road, as well as other breaks uh, throughout the valley, uh, I would be interested um, what, in our strategy for that, uh, for, for wildland suppression. I don't know if it fall, would fall under our department or if that's the county or Cal Fire, whoever it is, but um, uh, certainly everyone's uh, mindful with the campfire what could happen in our valley, so. That's it, thanks. Thank you. Um, before you move on, mm -hmm. uh, I owe Chief Ray an apology. He actually sent me a copy of that plot map and it was completely an uh, oversight on my part not to include it uh, along with, uh, with the report that he sent me, so I apologize for that. Uh, and I also just want to state to, you know, we're not even two weeks into this, uh, but I don't think a day has gone by where either Chief Gray or his Deputy Chief Bob Senate haven't shown up at my office just to check in and see how things are going, constant emails, talks. I know the BCs have been at uh, the fire station daily. Uh, Chief Gray has spent significant time talking to the firefighters as his Deputy Chief Senate. Um, so it's all very appreciated and uh, you know, I think we all recognize that there's gonna be bumps that need to be smoothed out that, that you just can't foresee, but uh, they've been very good at helping us with that. So from those perspectives, uh, I'm just very appreciative and I feel very optimistic about the arrangement in terms of uh, being able to move forward. So thank you. I just want to kind of reiterate what Eric said. It has been an easy transition, so I just want to thank Chief Gray and his staff. Um, like Eric said, you know, Chief Senate has stopped by and it's pretty much whatever questions we have that are arise, you know, there's, there's people that we can't ask and there's going to be an answer for us. So, um, like I said, the, the BCs, you know, the training chief, the veg management, everybody has reached out to us and uh, it's very appreciated of, of them. So they are looking out for our best interests so, and the community. So, thank you. You know, and I'm also glad that Captain Brackett spoke up. Um, he's been really going above and beyond and trying to help from the personnel side on that side, been incredibly communicative with me, making sure little things don't slip through the track, slip through the tracks. Uh, just taking on a task that certainly is well beyond the job description of a firefighter. I've told him personally, but I think it's good that it's stated in public uh, uh, in his role of captain especially. He's, uh, he's really stepped up, he's really uh, stepped forward, and he's doing everything he can to help all of this succeed. And uh, for myself, uh, I'm incredibly appreciative of that. And, uh, and I believe he knows that, but I'm happy to say it again. Uh, Thank you. It's been incredibly appreciated. All right. And show Senator. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Um, you're, did you hear the excuse me? Did you already talk to Ms. Bowden? I'm just trying to keep us on time. I, I haven't. Oh, go ahead. Well, I, I haven't spoken on this issue yet, but I would like to. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'll be, I'll be quick. Um, I think I, I told you guys last month that I've been going to the San Rafael Fire Commission meetings for a few years. And, and I know that these guys are men and women, but especially the chiefs are top notch. And I'm really excited that we will have access to their vegetation management teams, to their nursing teams, to um, different types of well, we already, we already do training with them, uh, but I just think it is such a benefit to have all these additional resources, and they're very responsive, and, and I just think it's great. I do want to ask one question, though. Last month, um, it was suggested that, let's see, I think it was Mr. Naylor and Ms. Green were going to be forming a committee to go and talk to San Rafael, has that happened? And are you going to be doing that? So I think that's outside of, like, can we, I mean, I, that's not okay. what Well, it's right part now. of fire, for the fire department stuff. Right, I think <coughs> we let's bring that up. So you don't want to talk about it now? It, it's just, okay. I don't see how well, that That's no big deal. I just think it's going to be an absolutely fantastic communion or marriage or what she said. Yes, thank is, you. Isabella said everything I wanted to say. Okay. 
So you're changing, can we have a, like a board or something like that that announces meetings and the, the time that they're being held out, out front? I've, I've asked for this before, a changeable sign board, it's usually, you usually see it in most communities. They're not expensive. Um, I think they start at like $60. Okay, so can we stay on topic please? Well, the topic is changing the time and I'm concerned that people will not know that the time has changed. So how do you inform people? If it, I know you like to use next door, and I continue to remind people that not everybody's on next door, and I know you post it, which is good, but that additional step that most communities do by having a sign board telling when the meetings are would be very helpful, and you get more public participation. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? All right, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstain? Did everybody vote? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> I, I thought I didn't hear everybody. All right, item I-3, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Reports. <coughs> Okay. Um, well, I just want to uh, say that we had a fantastic, uh, our sixth annual Art and Wine show on October 27th. It was like the best one yet. Um, full house all night. Great artwork. Um, just it's a very lively bunch. And it's um, just really fun to kind of bring a different kind of demographic into our community center. And, and um, I really think that event is. Um, has been growing in a really cool way. I want to thank Susan Press for curating uh, the artists and the artwork and helping us put that event on. And we're looking forward to the next one in spring. Um, our next event is going to be our uh, Winter Fest on December 7th. Hope you guys are able to come. Uh, anyone that has two kids uh, is welcome to participate in that. We don't have any of those. Um, and, uh, 12 and under, 12 and under. Well, the older ones probably will be a little bored. Um, or if they're a little bit older, they will be a little bit uh, <clears throat> programs are going well. Uh, we're kind of winding down some of our outdoor uh, classes. Um, our junior tennis league uh, had a, has had a good season, and, and they they won um, out of their their matches uh, this time around uh, again. And I'm really proud of them and of all the work Coach Jerry's uh, done with them. And. Um, we are beginning to advertise for our, our recreation supervisor position and hoping to start interviews in the next month to get that um, spot filled. Um, so uh, are there any questions about the recreation side of things before I move on to parks maintenance? Any questions? The recreation um, supervisor, what's the um, focus? Is it camps? The, this particular position oversee, currently oversees the pool. Uh, adult programs and special events, among other office and miscellaneous duties. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The pool finance is a work or summer um, thing is forthcoming, correct? I'm sorry. The um, pool slash uh, summer camp finance. Yeah, I, um, I have to apologize. I know you brought that up last meeting and uh, just. Um, no, it's, it's okay. If no, you but yeah, start I, with it, the commission it, and then go to the board. That's fine. Yeah, it will. It should be. I think we should have it for the next. Um, Stay tuned. Um, uh, anything else? Um, moving on to the parks, I don't know if anyone else is a little chilly uh, tonight in this room, but um, 
our uh, heater for the classroom has um, stopped working, and we are going to need to. I, this isn't in my report, but um, we're going to need to uh, repair or replace. Um, air, is it repair or replace? Uh, it's a replace. Replace um, uh, the heater for the classroom, and so that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, with, with, with the timeline on that is uh, ideally, relatively quickly, uh, we've already started taking in some bids. Would most likely wind up using the same company that just replaced the HVAC system uh, into a much better and more efficient system for the fire department. I'm interested in that cost being a little under six thousand. Um, it's not a budgeted expense as such. It goes uh, very slightly above my threshold. I don't know that I would call it an emergency, although uh, our preschool teachers might disagree with me and show up and set up first thing in the in the morning. Um, what I would ideally like from the board is just some direction to say replace it because it needs to be replaced. It's not going to be a massive expense and it'll be uh, accounted for in a future budget amendment. So we can, yeah. we can take a poll, right? We can direct Yeah, we can Outside the doors right there, and then immediately to the right. Uh huh. Yeah, they are located behind those doors right there. So uh, there's so actually two of them. Um, they oh, are. Oh, oh, oh! I know where you're. I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. How old are these puppies? Twenty plus years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, these are old. Uh, they're they're incredibly inefficient, and uh, I would also assume. This small investment in replacing it will probably pay for itself relatively quickly with the efficiency gain from uh, how much better it will heat as opposed to the other ones. Um, the difference with on the other side was both the heater and the air conditioner needed to be replaced and they're slightly different split systems uh, with ground mounted air and couplings that go through the heating system. This one actually comes down from the roof for AC. Those systems still work good. Uh, and he, uh, the technician we brought out uh, when they were doing our regular quarterly service, um, stated that he didn't see a need to replace the air, and nor would replacing the air now be less expensive than having to replace the air later due to the type of system. You don't gain any economies of scale through the labor, it's a pretty simple hookup to doing it. Uh, and he also said that uh, you might want to anticipate the second heater going out shortly hereafter, and all of these seem to have been done at the exact same time, most likely when this building was remodeled. Uh, they had all the same stamps and uh, everything is the ones that were next door that were replaced. So all of these are looking at 20 plus years now. Uh, um, my opinion is while the second one's still working, hopefully it carries us through this year and we'll budget appropriately for next fiscal year and plan on fixing it when it fails, or replacing it when it fails. Okay. Forced air. Is it natural gas? Oh, yeah, it's or? gas. Mm -hmm. Let's do what we need to do. With that. That's where my head's at. <laughs> <laughs> but I you know, these things all tend to go out in triplets. So I, I anticipate that coming soon. We should put the ghost on heater. Yeah, exactly. Well, we had some space heaters <laughs> in here before the uh, kids this morning, and it's definitely getting cold. So, I mean, the timing of this is. Bad, but it's also one of those things where the heater hadn't run for the last six, eight months. So, so that brings up, you know, uh, when I had my heating system done again, it's a house, mm -hmm. not a not commercial, commercial facility. One of the recommendations was, irrespective of how hot it gets during the summer, turn your heater on once in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and they are, uh, they're going through and should be looking at these things with all of their quarterly inspections. This is also part of the reason why I just changed providers from who was doing their quarterly inspections uh, to who is now doing all of our quarterly maintenance inspections and everything. Uh, I actually feel a lot better about the company that we're using now. Um, they seem to be much more thorough in their inspections and they're actually uh, less expensive in the district. Uh, and because we are on this annual contract with them, uh, all of these parts and things we buy, there's a you know, ten percent off the top automatically anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, good luck. Thanks. Thanks, Eric. Um, so our park crew's been focusing on getting things ready for the potential uh, 
storm season and been out in the creek clearing some uh, fallen trees and, and debris that have piled up in the uh, last season, as well as checking the drains of the bee ditches, the culverts, and um, uh, making sure everything's in you know okay shape to, to get some water this hopefully get some water this winter. So we're not working on that, and um, there hasn't been any uh, anything too um, out of the ordinary. So that's been going well. Feel free. Not the same thing, but I think you know, we'll address we'll things as they come up. Uh, but things are, things are looking okay. And um, working on some, some cleanup and landscaping projects uh, in, these, in these months. We're trying to take advantage of the dry weather as long as we can to, to get some projects done before um, it starts raining. So that's where we're at. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yes? Is the dilapidating shed as covered as it can be? In Anticipation for the rain. It says so covered as we're going to make it. Anticipation. Because now that we're looking at potential delays and it's it's going to be probably. It's uh, yeah. I'm not sending anyone up on the roof at this point. So um, uh, we, we talked. We looked at you know what's potentially going to happen when it rains and. Um, there's water coming in from the, from the ground mostly, and some water leaking in from uh, above, and you know we'll just kind of deal with it as it comes. But I don't want to send anyone up on that roof up at this point. So my understanding from talking to Richard today is that the wind over I don't know last week or something like that has sort of tar torn up the carpets there already. There's a tear in the in one section <laughs> of it. Um, as to whether that's going to affect the uh, you know the, the how waterproof um, that area is. It's, um, it's not that's not clear that that's you know where the water's coming in if that's going to be an issue, but um, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. But at this point, uh, uh, I think I'll draw away from putting someone up there to make sure this this time around. So drones, drone, yeah, I mean, sure to drop a tarp. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about the um, land design schedule. Um, they come here once a week. Um, they typically come once a week. Um, what's actually in the contract is the work to be done. Um, and so they attempt to um, comply with the contract by, by showing up once a week. Sometimes they um, will add a, a day here and there, usually prompted by me to um, catch up if they're getting behind, if there's been rain or something like that. But that's, they are typically here on Wednesdays. And what other areas do they rotate um, on? I mean, from our for our, uh, our community. So um, they, as as is what's in the report, this is uh, the, this is like kind of the general schedule, not the week, not like any given one um, month or even well, I guess they are trying to hit up these areas within a given month. But they uh, they do the the burns and the um, some of the meetings in the Lucas Valley Estates. They do all the walking paths of all of Marinwood, um, blow and, and take care of any trash in those areas and um, they do the, the medians along the river creek uh, they manicure the, the two medians closest to the community center and they do this very general um, i guess what i'm saying is is the is the schedule the same or does it vary depending on our needs and if there is a set schedule can we see a vague they, so they send me an activity report typically at the end of the month on what they have, uh, where they've been and what they've covered on the given, um, on the given days that they've been out here. Um, and so that does change depending on the weather, depending on the weeds, depending on what's going on. So um, it's not always the same month to month, but um, they give me sort of an activity report at the end of the month. Of so they are the doing. decision makers really on what needs the attention most? Well, they're operating off of the the contract that lists what they need to be doing um, and what you know what the uh, the standard is for how high weeds can grow, where the you know when the breeze piling up, and, and what our standard is for the manicuring of the, the different shrubs and the medians. So, I, I do give them uh, freedom to you know assess the areas and. They, they have a sort of a routine that they go on, they hit the areas up, they do have a schedule that they follow, but they do change that up as, as you know, the needs change, and I check in with the supervisor. Can I, can I see a copy of that schedule? Yeah, 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 Thank yeah you. sure.
I have a quick question. Okay. Um, I want, I'd like to know why the park staff does not cut the grass in front of the fire department when it cuts the grass in front of the community center. The, um, I understand the, our firefighters have to cut the grass. Why, why do our firefighters cut the grass? Um, my understanding is that the firefighters took it upon themselves to cut the grass uh, a number of years ago. There were some staff members that um, enjoyed doing some of the landscaping and wanted to uh, help out and do that. So that's uh, precedes me. I'm not. I don't know how to talk to anyone about that, but that's been our. But um, that's supposed to be done by the park department, right? Uh, I'm, I don't know that that's. Um, I don't know how to answer that. Whether it should be done by them or us, I think it's taken on voluntarily. So I, um, no one's asking them to, to do that. I guess. The answer to that. Huh. Which I feel like we've already had this conversation. I just wonder if it was in the MOU. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Moving on, uh, item uh, I 4 the date of the next Park and Rec Commission. I, I, I had some. Oh, sorry, Stephen. Uh, so, uh, uh, I guess uh, I would ask the, uh, that the Park and Rec staff, uh, or the Park staff, take better care of their area. You know, every, the, it's gone through cycles where it it's, gets messy and then it gets cleaned up, but basically you have a massive area there used as land, for landscaping debris and, and trash storage. And it's just, you know, it's unsightly. We don't have a large park and um, I, one of the reasons why there's such strong objections to this new maintenance facility that'll be uh, occupying so much. In, can, you, can you stay on topic, please? Can, yes, I'm on right. topic. Thank you. That's, that's so not, you're interrupting me, and not, I would like to continue that's, that's, what I the had topic to is say. Not in the reports. Uh, okay. I, I'm talking about the maintenance area and the the upkeep of the maintenance area, which is is not up to, I think, uh, what the standard should be for uh, a, a community of million dollar homes. Now, maybe you do. Uh, I don't know. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> item I-4, date of next PNR commission meeting is November 27th. And then item J-1, in, appoint incoming fire commissioners. Sarah made us a nice letter about all this. We've got, looks like, two members seeking appointment. Is there a motion? Um, I would like to make a motion to approve, um, the um, two members who are seeking appointment, um, as well as uh, Russ O'Bannon, who is um, graciously agreeing to turn the role until the placement appears. Yeah. Second. Okay, any discussion? Yeah, so um, that gets us I mean, with a temporary um, volunteerism of Mr. Alvano, that gets us back to where we need to be with the fire commission? Uh, you'll still have a vacancy of the alternate position if you're moving the current alternate into a regular, oh, right, yes. into a regular mm -hmm. position. Okay, but for all intents and purposes, we're not in danger of not having a quorum. Okay, um, he also goes on to say that he, you know, if, if it's the spirit of the commission, um, he'll continue as the um, chair of the commission. Um, if he is indeed temporary, it might be good to have somebody step up and take over the chairmanship of the commission uh, going forward, rather than having someone all of a sudden be thrown into, the, uh, into that role. Um, but otherwise, I just think between the fire commissioner, commissioners and the parks and rec commissioners, uh, it shows a very definite complacency from the community to participate. And we can only say, well, it's because we're doing such a great job 
that they feel they're everything's covered, but uh, that's probably not the case, really. It's just that we need to beat the bushes a little more to find some uh, interested people. They probably just don't know what time to show up. Probably. Uh, any questions, comments from the public? Stephen? Uh, as usual, Irv's right again for the last <laughs> part of the meeting. Um, yeah, people don't know uh, how to get involved because we don't publicize our meetings, which goes back to having signage to announce the meetings. So I, I agree. I think we need more, more involvement because people get surprised when things happen to them, not to their liking. And I'm going to say one quick thing. I'm sorry, but you guys have been talking yourself. Um, that also goes for the board. We didn't have any anybody wanting to be on the board, except for one person, and she automatically got on the board. So it, it's really, I think we need a little more communication to the public. And Nextdoor has changed the way they send out emails and notifications now. So people are not even getting emails. So if you think something's going to be on the next our website, watch out because pretty soon you're not going to be getting any emails, okay. and nobody's going to know what's happening. So perhaps you need more communication with the public. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. I vote J two appoint incoming park and recreation commissioners. I'd like to make the obvious motion of. Uh, appointing John Tune to um, the Park and Rec Commission. He has been um, wonderful to have on the commission. His expertise and um, um, our uh, as an arborist, here we go. <laughs> um, is um, is really beneficial to our community. So um, lovely to have him. I guess my motion is to approve him. Second. You have a second. Uh, any discussion? Mm -hmm. Any discussion from or comments from the public? I don't call a question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries unanimously. Item J3, request for future meeting agenda items. Anything from the board? Nothing. Any comments from the public? Stephen? A request. Uh, that we have a meeting talking about uh, the, uh, actually this is an ongoing request, uh, a report on where we stand on the maintenance shed project, including um, budgets, because we're, we're flying blind uh, with the budgets, and uh, I don't think that's acceptable. Um, and I do think that the board and the staff uh, perhaps accidentally, well, let's call it accidentally, is not following uh, government contracting laws as well as disclosure laws. And uh, it could have ramifications in the success of this project. And keep in mind, we all want a successful project, every single person in this room. So, so uh, and the 100 plus, 200 uh, plus signatures that we had. Um, they, they want a successful project as well. So if you engage a public um, and disclose and do things the right way, we'll, we'll be smooth sailing. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Uh, that was. I will say coming up. Uh, for next month, something for the board to be thinking about. Uh, in December, you typically elect your officers for the uh, coming calendar year. Okay, so we want to put that on there. Yep. Okay. In December, did we have a, qu a quorum? Uh, two, two directors have stated that they will not be able to attend next month, so as long as you don't have a third person state, then you won't need to reschedule and or uh, cancel the meeting. Okay. Noted. Uh, item K, recognitions and board member items of interest. Jeff. I'd like to thank Irv Schwartz for re-engaging first on the fire commission. 
and when an experienced and thoughtful voice was needed on the board accepting that appointment. Um, Irv, you brought a great deal of professional perspective to bear in your time on the board, and we can only hope that you will remain engaged as a citizen with some of the projects and visions in the future. Thank you. for her. I won't read the whole thing, but I'll read the last bit, okay? Um, resolve, I should put these things. <laughs> I can read over my shoulder. Resolve that the Marinwood Community Services District Board of Directors do hereby recognize Irving Schwartz in conclusion of his term as Board of Director and offer our deepest appreciation for his astounding efforts and countless hours expended in selflessly serving the community of Marinwood Lucas Valley for the greater benefit of all. May I say something? Sure. Sometime about 1967, I think. Or score. <laughs> you folks, or your predecessors, built the mini park down on Las Colinas Avenue. And shortly after it was installed, the owner of the, then, the now Purple House said, there's too much noise there. And the, di the district board caved and pulled all the swings out, left the frames. But took the swings off. And a whole bunch of neighbors got really upset that had little kids. And so my wife sent me down to the CSD meeting. And there were three or four other ladies from around the neighborhood, but I was the only guy that went down. And uh, so they opened this item that was for discussion. And the chairman, being very uh, politically correct, said, well, let's have the ladies here speak first. And they all said, oh no, Mr. Schwartz is here representing us. <laughs> <laughs> and about two weeks later, I got appointed to the Parks and Rec Commission. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it started. <laughs> it, it, it's been fun. It's, it's been sometimes disappointing. I wish things could move quicker. Uh, but uh, I've enjoyed working with you and with staff. And, uh, I'm sorry I won't get to work with Chief Gray as a, as a board member here in the district, but what he doesn't know is I've been working with Deputy Chief Senate uh, on some projects I'm working on in other in, in areas of San Rafael, and we have one project here in Marinwood that is my goal to get us a creek path out of it from Las Colinas Avenue along the south side of Miller Creek and under the extension of Marinwood Avenue, and I'm going to keep working on that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other recognition for board member items of interest? Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.